Coming up on Mornings on the Hill, the first snow of the season, what that means for those traveling for the holiday. And former President Trump's plans in 2024, what he announced in Mar-a-Lago last night. Plus, your weather and orange sports coming on today's edition of Mornings on the Hill. It starts right now. Good morning, I'm Sydney Staples. Thanks for joining us on Mornings on the Hill. And I'm Jayla Pettis. Let's get to our top story for the day. Now to our top story. Okay. I had to scrape. <laughs> I had to scrape snow off my car for the first time this morning. It doesn't really snow like this in North Carolina. It just depends on the year. Mornings on the Hill reporter Zach Richter is live outside with more. Zach. Good morning, Sydney and Jayla. It is cold out right now but not as cold as we saw last night as we saw our first measurable snowfall of the year here in Syracuse. As you can see, it's white here behind me, but it's starting to melt because it's above freezing. We saw about two inches of snow here in Syracuse. However, it stopped because it started, the temperatures got warmer and it started to change over to rain in the early morning hours of this morning. As, and that's why the snow is starting to melt. As we come back here live, you can see the snow here as I'm picking it up from the ground. You can see it is really a wet, heavy type of snow. It really just melts in my hand because of all that humidity that is currently in the air. I'll have more coming up in your five-day forecast in just a bit as when we will see our next snow. But, Sydney, Jayla, I'll send it back to you in the studio for now. Thanks, Zach. Now to a developing story this morning. One victim shot in the University of Virginia shooting Sunday night is now discharged from the hospital. UVA Health says the other victim hospitalized is still in serious condition. Suspect Christopher Carnell Jones, accused of killing three students and injuring two, is expected to appear in front of a judge today to determine if he can afford a lawyer. We'll keep you updated on the development of this story after the hearing. In the Oval Office, just three years ago, Donald Trump made an announcement about his return to Washington. Reporter Micah Prine Goldstein joins us live to tell us the latest in Trump's pursuit of restoring good in America. Micah. Former President Donald Trump took to the podium late last night at Mar-a-Lago to declare his intention to run for president again. If elected, he would become the 15th president to serve at least two terms, joining Grover Cleveland as the only other to serve non-consecutively. Trump says that he promises to correct America as it is being, quote, destroyed before your eyes. Trump's declaration comes amid heavy controversy regarding stolen documents from the White House and his involvement with the January 6th Capitol riots. FBI officials have not yet confirmed which documents have been taken and if they will prevent Trump from being eligible to run. His declaration will set up a potential rematch with Joe Biden, who also says he plans to run for re-election in 2024. Trump said, quote, that is two words, the American dream. That was not good at what he said and what he did. He did a lot of bad things, like going to Idaho and saying welcome to the state of Florida. I really love it. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Trump then went on to deliver his announcement speech in front of a group of allies, advisors, and conservative influencers who looked on in the hope that he can reclaim the Oval Office after the Republicans' lackluster showing in the midterms. More still to come from this FEI on developing story. Reporting live, I'm Micah Prine Goldstein from Mornings on the Hill. Back to you guys. Thanks, Micah. Voters in Georgia will be going to the polls once again after failing to decide the Senate race involving the incumbent Raphael Warnock and challenger Herschel War Walker. The race is heading to a December 6th runoff after neither candidate won the majority of votes. Meantime, Warnock's Democratic campaign is suing the state of Georgia to overturn guidance by the state's Republican Secretary of State, who overturned Saturday voting for the upcoming runoff election. Mornings on the Hill can now project that Brandon Williams will win New York's 22nd Congressional District in a very close race. Currently, 97% of the vote is in. 
Williams received 50.8% of the vote, with a total of just over 130,000 votes, with Canole receiving just above 49% of the votes. Williams will take over for Republican John Katko, who decided not to rerun for election after serving in the position since 2015. This weekend, a black woman-owned online tea shop celebrated its grand opening downtown. Mornings on the Hill reporter Isabel Flores joins us live in studio to break down how the shop was received by the public. Isabel? That's right, Jayla. Winter's Tea is a new online shop that aims to help customers take some time out of their day to relax. I was able to catch up with the owners of Winter's Tea at their grand opening to find out more about the vision behind their brand. Excited customers showed up to the Flintstone Cannabis Company venue to celebrate the opening of Winter's Tea, a new black woman-owned virtual tea shop committed to providing sustainable and environmentally friendly products. Tea enthusiast Rachel Hogan found out about the event through social media and already likes what the company stands for. I'm just excited just to see like the opening of a new shop and especially uh, I really like tea and the fact that it's black owned is really amazing. So I'm just excited to support this new business. The grand opening celebration provided attendees with various performances, appetizers, desserts, and of course, tea. Growing up Caribbean, Amelia and Jasmine were exposed to a lot of tea growing up and intertwined their culture into their business. I am Jamaican and Nigerian, but I still do identify as a black American. At the end of the day, that's my nationality. Um, so I kind of take all three things <laughs> and I'm like, this is me. That's me as well. I'm not Nigerian, but I am Jamaican and I am black and I take those everywhere I go. We, we introduce that into everything that we do. The two women said that it was important for them to have a company that was both environmentally friendly and sustainable. So our tea is actually completely sourced using solar powered um, farms. So our container and all of the labels on it are all compostable. So you can just throw the whole thing in there. Um, and then our poly millers are biodegradable. Um, and then the actual tea bags that they come in um, are made of like sugarcane fibers, I want to say. After several taste testing rounds, customers lined up outside of a small stand selling some of Winter's tea products. In just a few moments, customers almost completely wiped out the inventory. Not to worry though, Winter's Tea already has their website set up for virtual purchases. Since its opening on Saturday, the company has had more than 80 tea sales and has had three companies reach out to partner with them to sell their products, including a shop in London. Reporting for Mornings on the Hill, I'm Isabel Flores. Maddie and Jayla, back to or sorry, Sydney and Jayla, back to you. Men's basketball had a tough time in the Dome last night, but there is another team on campus to lift our spirits. Maddie Mushin joins us in the studio to tell us more. Maddie? Syracuse men's basketball fell to Colgate last night. Well, hey, I was at the game last night. Were you? Yeah, I was, and Colgate won. I mean, I was shocked, and they basically held the lead the entire time. Was the attendance high? Yeah, more than a women's basketball team, but Maddie was also there last night and can tell us a little bit more. Okay. Syracuse men's basketball fell to Colgate last night in their first loss of the season. Colgate has now won back-to-back matchups against the Orange after a strong 80-68 win in the Dome. Although the basketball team had a disappointing performance last night, there was a glimmer of hope for Orange sports. During halftime, the men's soccer team was recognized as the ACC men's soccer champions after their win against Clemson on Sunday. The team was honored on the court, showing off their trophy to the home crowd in the Dome. I'll be joined by two of the soccer team's beat reporters for Sports Illustrator later on in the show, so make sure to stay tuned to hear about their experience traveling to North Carolina. Sydney, Jayla, back to you. Coming up on Mornings on the Hill, a journey into space. More on NASA's uncrewed mission to the moon. And the annual beer festival is back. Find out what vendors you can expect to see this weekend with their best on tap. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mornings on the Hill. It's time to check your weather for today. Zach Richter joins us now in studio with a look at your full weather forecast. Zach, yesterday was more than this What should we expect the rest of the day? Good morning, Sydney and Jayla. Right now, as we take a look outside, it's 37 degrees right now. A little chilly, but warmer than it was earlier today when we saw that below freezing temperatures in that snowfall. Feels like 36. There's virtually no wind right now. It's about below 2 miles an hour, and the humidity is very high. It's around 96%. 
Turning to our hourly forecast around, we're going to see the temperatures go up throughout the day. We could see 44 by around 5 o'clock, and then we're going to see it go down to the mid to low 30s later today before they start to rise again tomorrow. Now looking at our regional temperatures here in central New York, 39 in Syracuse, 36 in Rome, 36 in Albany, and a little bit colder as you start to head north. And then towards Buffalo, we have around 39 degrees, and in Buffalo, you could see about three to four feet of snow coming later this weekend in just a few days. Could be see the most snow in Buffalo since we have seen in seven years. Now let's take a look at our five day forecast here. S Wednesday as today, it's going to be a mix of snow and sleet. I don't know if we're going to see any bit more. It will only be a little bit. Nothing like what we saw last night. Thursday, high of 38, low of 30. We could just see some snow flurries. It won't be much accumulation or anything. Friday, high of 37, low of 24. It's just going to be cloudy, no precipitation really. Saturday, partly sunny. We start to see the sun return, high 34. And Sunday, we're going to see some snow a little bit, high 32 and a low of 24. Taking a look at our day planner, let's get deeper into tomorrow. In the morning, it's going to start at 34 degrees. In the afternoon, high of 38. And then in the evening, 35, before it starts to drop down to 33. Now, when can we see our next snow chance in Syracuse? of accumulation that might not be till next weekend after Thanksgiving where we could possibly see some heavy accumulation. That's all I got for weather right now. Sydney, Jayla, I'll send it back over to you guys. Central New York Beer Week is in full swing. This week long celebration has the goal of bringing craft breweries from all over the state together. Mornings on the Hill reporter Sammy St. Jean explains what to expect from the week as well as a look towards Saturday's exclamation point. Sammy? It is now day two of Beer Week in Central New York. This is a week-long event that has been going on for nine years, but Willow Rock Brewing Company owner Rockney Roberts says that they underwent a new change for this year's celebration. Beer Week has been a, a great celebration of craft beer in Syracuse for quite a few years now. Um, this year it's very brewery-centric, local brewery-centric, which is great. Distributors were no longer able to organize the week this year, which means brewers are more hands-on. As a result, events like casks and bluegrass are featured, which brings a unique beer drinking experience. Uh, you can sit down with a cask and sort of watch as the night goes on. Uh, the oxidative process, some new flavors will come out of the beer. Uh, it tends to be a little warmer, a little less carbonated than usual. There are six events going on in the area, one of which is at Willow Rock Brewing Company to celebrate Beer Week, and the events continue on the rest of the week. But it all leads up to Saturday at the Landmark Theater for the Craft Brewers Festival, where over 55 brewers from the state will be represented. This unique experience allows beer drinkers to taste beer from all over the state. But Buried Acorn owner Timothy Shore says it does more by bringing the minds of the magic to you. Every single brewery has somebody like a brewer, owner, or even a brand rep um, to, to sell or to, you know, to tell you about the beer, tell you how it's made. Um, and um, so that's one of the unique things about this specific festival as opposed to some of the festivals that are put together. Thank you, Sammy. And the Craft Brewers Festival will be from 4 to 8 p.m. this Saturday, and each of the over 55 breweries is bringing their choice of two beers. NASA has finally launched its uncrewed Artemis One mission on a historic journey to the moon. The spacecraft took off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 1.47 Eastern this morning. It's on a 25 and a half day journey around the moon. The mission marks the first Artemis program in its plan to eventually return astronauts to the moon for the first time since the mid 20th century. The capsule is scheduled to return back to Earth in the Pacific Ocean on December 11th. With Thanksgiving break just days away, our staff here has got stuffing on their minds. Mornings on the Hill reporter Jeremy Lynch joins us live in studio to talk about Thanksgiving traditions. Jeremy? Thanks guys. I went around the newsroom this morning to talk to our staff about their favorite Thanksgiving traditions and this is what they had to say. What is your favorite Thanksgiving tradition? So we have our big family over for dinner and all of my cousins and my aunts and uncles and I play left, right, center. Uh, it would have to be having all the family over at our house. Uh, we have a big table set up and everyone comes over and we just all eat. So every year, me and my family, we all circle around our table holding hands and see what we're thinking for. So on Thanksgiving and on Christmas, I'm always responsible for making the mashed potatoes. I make a really good mashed potatoes, used to make them with my grandfather. My favorite Thanksgiving tradition is just being with my family after coming home from school and just being all together. 
My favorite tradition is um, helping my mom the night before Thanksgiving. We always help her make dressing by hand and then we listen to Christmas music. My, me and my family really like to eat. Typically my parents are working on Thanksgiving. They're both flight attendants. So it's just chilling with Oakley, my brother at home. My mother's thing, <laughs> watching my mother stay up late and seeing her prep the food and helping her with that. I'll like help her cube the cheese for the mac and cheese or I'll throw on the marshmallows for the candy yams. So that's my favorite is seeing the food, food prep. My favorite Thanksgiving tradition is split up into three different things. I call them the three F's of Thanksgiving. Family, food, and football. According to the Education First Academy blog, some of the biggest Thanksgiving traditions in the United States are eating a Thanksgiving meal, sharing what you are thankful for, watching a football game, taking a nap, and running a turkey trot. I would also like to take this time to wish everyone a happy and healthy Thanksgiving to those who are celebrating this year. Reporting live from in studio for Mornings on the Hill, I'm Jeremy Lynch. Coming up on Mornings on the Hill, some good and bad in the world of orange sports. That and more coming up after the break. Good morning, I'm Michael Villegas with your Orange Sports Update here on Mornings on the Hill. We start with men's basketball. They had a disappointing loss last night to Colgate in the dough. They couldn't stop the bleeding and Colgate led by as much as 18 in the game, which was too much for the Orange to overcome as they lost to Colgate for the second year in a row with a final score of 68 to 80. Here's what Coach Beheim had to say after the loss. It's a really good team and they're a lot better than we are right now. And uh, I think the one thing that I thought in, in a lot of ways our, our defense had a lot of good moments. Did a, we did a lot of good things on defense. Uh, our offense was horrendous. Well, they also lost this past Saturday as the offense couldn't find the end zone as they fell to a dominant Florida State team 38-3. The Orange will try to stop their four-game losing streak as they travel to Wake Forest this coming Saturday to take on the Demon Deacons. Women's field hockey had a great season that unfortunately ended on Sunday as women fell to third-seeded Maryland 3-2 in a heartbreaking shootout and they finished the season with a 16-6 record and stayed undefeated at home. For some good news on the Syracuse cross country team earned automatic qualifying spots to the NCAA cross country championships after strong performances at the Northeast Regional on Friday. The NCAA championships will take place in Stillwater, Oklahoma this Saturday and men's soccer won the ACC championship. Sports reporter Maddie Mushin is in the studio with a few special guests to talk about the men's soccer team. Maddie. Men's soccer clinched the ACC title on Sunday with a 2-0 win over Clemson. With this win, the Orange got a three seed and a first round bye for the NCAA tournament. The ACC championship was held in North Carolina and two of our Morning on the Hill reporters traveled down there to cover the game. Joining me to talk about the game is Cindy Staples and Sammy St. Jean, who are both beat reporters for Sports Illustrated. Sammy, could you start off with telling me about this road trip? Yeah, so I was covering the Florida State game as a photographer. We left at 11.45, the 10 hour trip got there at 10 and it was a very quick turnaround, but uh, with two hours to spare, we got there ready for the game in time. And Sid, could you tell me a little bit about some of the highlights of this big win over Clemson? Of course, the two goals that came in the first half, we have Lorenzo Baselli shortly after that, Kirk Calla found uh, Jonah Labold, uh, and who made it 2 nothing, And then in the second half, you had Russell Shealy. He came out huge with a big-time save to keep that game 2 nothing. And for Sammy, with covering the team this entire season, did you expect the success? Maybe not to this degree, but they had a lot of promise before this season. They had a lot of draws last season, so it's kind of an indication they were right there and needed that extra experience to get over the hump, and well, they did that in spades this season for sure. And Sydney, what do you have to say to the fans to come out on Sunday? Be there. Be there. Wait to go to Thanksgiving. Come on, guys. It's going to be fun. And Coach McIntyre knows that the Syracuse community is great for soccer. So just go out and support your Orange. Thank you for both joining me on the couch today. Syracuse men's soccer will play the winner of the Rutgers and Penn on Sunday back at the Etsy Soccer Stadium. Michael, back to you. What a great season they've had thus far. And that'll do it for your sports. Jayla, back to you. Still to come here on Mornings on the Hill, a new season is out for the crown. What our, hear what our mob crew had to say. Stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes. It's the end of an era for an Any Women Award show. Mornings on the Hill reporter Elena Lacido joins us with more on this, sh on this show's final season and some of the mob crew's best British accents. 
The beloved show The Crown will finally be coming to an end. Season 5 just came out this past Friday. It will be followed by the sixth and final season to the show. The storyline will take place in the early 90s and up until the early 2000s. Queen Elizabeth will be played by Amelia Stoughton, who you may have seen in movies like Harry Potter or shows like Downtown Abbey. A prominent storyline will be Princess Diana. It will be followed by her fall with her relationship with Prince Charles and most likely lead to her de tragic death. And in honor of the crown, I went through some of the news room to have the people's best British impressions given. Okay. Yes. For mornings on the hill, I'm Michael Vallegas, hey? <laughs> For mornings on the hill, I'm Manny Rushton. For mornings on the hill, I'm Caitlin Parisi. On the hill, I want to walk and talk like a regular Keith Coblin. For mornings on the hill, I'm Semi St. Jean. For mornings on the hill, I'm Sydney Staples. For mornings on the hill, I'm Jayla Pettis. For mornings on the hill, I'm Isabel Flores. For mornings on the hill, I'm Matthew Kirby. The Queen is dead. For mornings on the hill, I'm Jamie Lynch. For mornings on the hill, I'm Kennedy Houston. For mornings on the hill, I'm Elena Cedo. Thanks for watching Orange Nation. The Macy's Day Parade is getting some new friends. Macy's will add new floats to their 96th annual Thanksgiving Day Parade. Wonder Bread will launch its new float, Wonder Ship, and Toys R Us gives us the giraffe, Jeffrey, an upgrade. The giraffe will DJ while singer Jordan Sparks performs. Final touches are being added by designers ahead of the event. That is going to do it for us this Wednesday here on Mornings on the Hill. But before we go, I want to know what you're doing on Thanksgiving. My parents are both working, so me and my brother Oakley are probably just going to be playing Mario Kart, but you? So I'll be helping my mom cook, and my two other sisters will be there as well. And then, of course, we have to watch football on Thanksgiving. Who do you think is going to win? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sydney Staples. Follow us on social media. I'm Jayla Pettis. Thanks for watching Orange Nation. Have a great Thanksgiving break, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks.